What Scraps means is a Spokane County Regional Animal Protection Service. It's a very long name that we shortened to Scraps. There was a time at a nonprofit where there was no need to really market, particularly at Scraps. You had no need to market, promote, publicize. You didn't need to uh, worry about donations because you really didn't have any programs that needed funded. As Scraps progressed into a regional animal protection facility, there became a need to have someone to write grants, to hold events, to get the word out about what they do. And that's where I came to this facility. I have not been here at Scraps very long, but in that time I've learned more about how we as society have changed our opinion towards animals. In 1923, Spokane County started Scraps, and it was very much that pound that people see on, on old movies. It was, you know, the place where animals came, dogs were taken in, cats were taken in off the street, and they were immediately euthanized. There was no holding of animals. One of the things that we get asked a lot here at Scraps is about no kill. If you have a no-kill shelter, you do not have any medicine on hand to euthanize the animal. Euthanize actually means good death, to help them pass over. So you just fill that animal full of morphine and you wait. That is not what we believe in doing. The euthanasia that we do is only for two specific reasons, and that's health and aggression. There isn't a matter of walking through the kennel every month and saying, OK, this animal's been here three days, this animal's been here three weeks, this one needs to put down, this one. There is no such thing as that anymore. There is no animal euthanized here for time and space. Through the work that we've done in the last seven or eight years, we have now a 92% rate with dogs. That's a live release rate. We're one of the highest rated shelters in the country for dogs. With cats, we have a bigger problem. With cats, people are not getting sterilization. So what ends up happening is a lot of people open up their front door, let their cat out, and don't worry where the cat's gone. The cat then starts to reproduce. One male, one female cat in 10 years with their offspring can make one million cats. We are overcrowded with cats here in Spokane, Washington. We need the cats that are here spayed and neutered. So our live release rate with cats is only about 50% because the cats that come to us when they're feral, first of all, they cannot be touched. They're carrying horrific diseases that cannot really be cured. They can be cured if, if you want to spend two or $3,000 per cat, but we simply don't have those kinds of funds. So that's where we're at with cats, and that's another place we really need people to help. A lot of the calls that we're getting are check on conditions where we go out, and you know, make sure the dog or cats have food and water, mm. um, patrols for stray dogs running down the street. Um, just, just depends on the day and how crazy it wants to be. Yeah, I didn't copy your last traffic. Uh, pickup of a massive, three smaller dogs and unknown amount of kittens. There's also a cow, but they're making other arrangements for the cow. 660 copies. <clears throat> so, um, law enforcement assists, and law enforcement fire assists, um, pretty much what they sound like. If law enforcement needs us to come pick up an animal, um, whether the owner's being arrested or the owner's deceased, um, just depends on what the circumstances.
these are our violation notices. Um, what we do is when we go out to try to make contact with somebody if they're not home, we'll leave them a violation notice asking them to call in, kind of what's going on. When an owner gets arrested for something like this, um, we give it to the deputy with the information on how they get their dogs back. I'm happy that we were removing the animals. Um, they need to get out of that. We removed six dogs, two of which were very young puppies, um, a cat. Um, the large animal um, guy is on his way to remove the cow and the goat. Yeah, that's where we're at. Now we'll take them to the shelter. Um, the shelter techs have been advised that we're bringing in that amount. They can help us give an exam. Um, if we decide to take any of them to the vet for medical checks, um, we can do that. Um, they can get a good meal tonight, um, nice warm area, a clean area to sleep in and lay down in. So yeah, that's where we're at. If an animal needs medical care, that vet has to be paid. So the money for that bill has to go to someone. Without an owner, that bill comes to scraps. Then we find a new home for them. We need a foster home for them to recover in. You cannot bring them back into a shelter environment. Shelter environments are very loud, they're very noisy. There's people and animals coming in and going out all the time. Just like you, if you had surgery, the last thing you want to be doing, have done is put, put in the middle of an airport. So we rely on those fosters to take those animals for weeks at a time, give them the care and the recovery that they need, and then they're brought back and they're adopted out. I've been working uh, with Scratch for about three years, but I've been doing fostering for over 20. I went to work at a high kill shelter in California and, got, and I saw them being euthanized. When you have to walk them back, or then you actually have to inject them, because there's not enough homes, there's not enough places, there's not enough rescues, they're packed, that's when I started taking the animals in. Some people think that if they volunteer, they got to do this all the time. They could come in one day a month, um, and we would love to have them. Uh, they can choose different things, uh, and it doesn't matter your physical ability or limitations. Everybody's different, but everybody does what they can, so it's not one does more than the other. You do what you can and whatever you can, and we're happy to have it. I won't, I won't stop because when you, I stop, another dog dies, another cat dies. Oh, yeah, you can get attached really bad. But if you don't move them, you can't help another because you get too full. So bottom line is we save lives, we help lives, and we do the best we can for everything, and uh, it's a great place to be. One of the biggest things people can do for us is to be aware. A lot of people have in their mind that old pound that I was talking about. That is not this place anymore. Come on down and see our 30,000 square foot facility and you'll see how clean, how well taken care of it is, how well taken care of the animals are. And there's a lot of things people can do to help other than just the education. First of all, spay and neuter your animals. That'll put us out of business and I'm happy to go. Just keep spay and neutering your animals. You can also volunteer here at Scraps. There's 22 different positions. If they don't get that socialization, they tend to retreat within themselves and they don't show very well in the kennels. People say to me, oh, I could never work there. I could never work there. Yeah, you could because the good part of it so outweighs the bad. And the bad part, we, we see the good part every single day. The bad part comes up every once in a while, but the good part is there all the time. It's really wonderful to see someone come in and this is their first animal that they're adopting and so they've got little children with them and they're standing there looking at this cat and there's this moment where they bond with that cat or dog and you see it in their eyes and it's like so wonderful to watch that every single day I get to see that there's just one scrap and here's where you're going to find your dog if you lose it here's where your cat's going to be if it's missing Here's where you're gonna to call to a report abuse to somebody. Here's where you're gonna to come to bring us the animal that you found under your porch. Scraps is the only place you do that.